morning. Uh, in the last uh, lecture, I just uh, given introduction on pile foundation and perhaps I have uh, stopped at uh, classification of pile. And while doing classification, we have discussed uh, the classification based on material and different types of material. And that time I have also discussed that uh, about um, uh, different type of materials uh, may not be suitable for every situation. So, how to choose what are the problem in different condition or different material uh, that I will start with and then I will slowly uh, take you to uh, the estimation of pile capacity for different condition. So, let me start with the first slide. Uh, uh, this is actually as I have mentioned that uh, material uh, based on materials uh, pile can be uh, ca classified like timber pile, steel pile, then uh, uh, concrete pile, composite pile. And now we will see here that uh, what are the problems while selecting the material you have to see the corrosive properties of the material. See if the steel sometimes it will corrosive actually because of the various weather condition. So, that has to be seen uh, then fluctuation in water table suppose if there is too much of fluctuation of water table then suppose wood timber pile may be difficult because of weighting and drying the sometimes it will be spoiled <coughs> and decomposed. Ease of installation so suppose if you want to drive a pile. Uh, maybe uh, steel pile will be the better one than the concrete. So, that if you want to use the driven pile then accordingly you have to consider that point. A length required that is another uh, important uh, parameter that uh, if you require suppose pile length is suppose suppose 60 meter and if you choose a wooden pile or timber pile it may not be a good uh, choice because wooden pile or timber pile sometime most of the time it will limit it to a very certain length. And similarly, similarly uh, so uh, steel for example, steel pile again can go for unlimited length, concrete pile you can have also some up to some length. So, that is also another point based on which we have to select the material. Then availability of the material suppose if the timber is available plenty then it is it may be uh, good to choose timber material, but other factors to be checked. Similarly, if we uh, uh, like that you have to uh, uh, consider that point. Similarly, installation equipment suppose if you want to choose driven pile then equipment access should be there if it is not there then perhaps that method should not be used. Then restriction in driving noise and vibration in uh, vibration that means, if you, that means uh, uh, if there is a, a construction site is a close to your uh, very uh, residential area, then sometime because of this driving noise and the vibration may, may prevent you to do that. So, because of that while selecting, uh, so that is also another point to be considered and last uh, not but, but least that is cost actually cost is the most important part again and ultimately you have to see all those things and then finally, you have to see the cost sometime you have to compromise because of the cost sometime. So, those things that means, these are the parameters you have to go through and then finally, which one is the best for you that has to be selected. Uh, next one is uh, that is what as I have mentioned that uh, there are some limitation in length you can see the type of pile uh, material and uh, type of pile material you can say here material. And then low, uh, 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 and this is not uh, sorry length. It is a, I have actually given actually capacity. So different pile can have different capacity. Actually, can uh, if it is a heavy capacity, then accordingly you have to choose a particular pile which is suitable for that. So that is the one actually guideline here. That wooden pile, if it is up to 15 to 30 ton, then may be suitable. If it is not, then you have you, you should not choose. Similarly, composite pile 20 to 30, then cast in place concrete 30 to 50, precast reinforced concrete 30 to 50, then steel pile, steel pipe concrete field actually 40 to 60, and steel edge section 30 to 60. So, like that, there are range. So, again, uh, based on capacity and then 
uh, other environmental condition etcetera and then cost accordingly you have to choose uh, you have to bring the capacity also one of the parameter for based on which actually you can select the uh, material type. So, if it is a uh, shorter length comparatively then generally wood pile sometimes can be used. And then the next part as I was telling that the limitation of the length actually steel H and pipe you can see unlimited length any length you can do and uh, generally unlimited length at a time you cannot do what we have to do actually it is short section to be driven first and then it has to be welded in the field and then you can uh, continue to do that until all this reach to the desired depth. Steel cell and cast in place the typically between 100 to uh, uh, 125 feet, 100 feet means actually it will be uh, just 30 meter and uh, similarly uh, uh, precast concrete uh, uh, solid small cross section uh, up to 60 feet that means around 20 meter 18 to 20 meter and large diameter cylinder pile can be up to 200 feet long, 200 means around 50 to 60 meter also we can go this uh, 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 precast concrete pile uh, th these are the typical range of length we can achieve by this type of pile. Similarly, cast in place concrete generally 50 to 75 feet depending on the equipment this is cast in place and 50 means around uh, 15 meters to around 25 30 meter actually this is will be there bulb type cast in place concrete up to about 100 feet that means 30 meter and composite depends on many factor maximum can be 150 feet and timber depends on wood type usually 50 to the 10 15 meter actually very common if it is more than that special consideration you have to see uh, so that means uh, your, you have to see your length requirement and based on that you can choose also uh, of course, uh, it has to be supported by other condition like environment and other things equipment access all those things. And now uh, that is classification based on uh, material and then how material can influence you to select the type of pile that we have discussed. Now, actually there is another classification based on the function how pile uh, what type of function it will uh, perform based on that pile can be classified and you can see here that it can be mentioned as end bearing end bearing means what pile actually is going like this and I will show that in the in a one set. So, that means load is applied through here and finally, load is transferred here that is end bearing. Then there is a friction that means if there is no steep layer then throughout the depth the actually uh, there will be friction develop between the soil and the pile and that actually can support the load. So, that is friction pile, tension or uplift pile that means there may be some pile will be there. So, load is this direction then friction will be in this direction. So, that is tension pile, compaction pile then anchor, batter pile, laterally loaded pile, seat pile. So, all those things I will just show in the next uh, slide together. Uh, you can see here I have shown all those things now. Uh, you can see here this is actually uh, end bearing pile that means, this is a pile and this is standing finally, on a uh, very steep layer or rock and this soil may be loose or soft and as, it resist, as a result that friction uh, resistance from the side will be comparatively uh, small or you can it when you say it, it one can say it is negligible then this load will be totally taken by this base. And this is actually friction pile you can see friction pile of uh, this type of section you take and if you apply load then from the side there are frictional resistance will be there or if it is straight also like this there will be load applied and then there is no hard base here then uh, if you uh, push the pile like this by load then all friction will be uh, opposite direction. So, by that actually entire load will be supported. So, that is friction pile and this is actually compaction pile that means uh, 
uh, if the loose soil if this type of uh, 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 members actually if you push inside the soil then surrounding the soil when this soil will be displaced and this volume actually ultimately equal equal volume will be compression will be there within the soil. So, when the side soil get compressed that means of that amount then that means automatically soil get compacted. So, this is sometime a number of piles can be driven and then based on that the side soil will be getting compressed or uh, densified. So, that is called compaction pile and this is actually you can see sometime you can use this way that means, if you if the load is this is for holding something suppose load is applied in this direction that means, within the pile some certain sufficient length should be there within the pile. So, that because of this friction the external load will be resisted. So, that is called tension pile this is fender pile then this is sheet pile wall actually sheet pile wall that means, uh, if you have a, uh, these are actually this wall actually very thin uh, 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 cross section and it will be uh, locking arrangement will be one after one it will be connected and driven and then there will be wall like of wall like structure will be formed and they are comparatively flexible and when it is uh, it can stand itself then uh, sometime you can make uh, free cantilever, cantilever uh, sheet pile wall and if it is a length is very high and because of thin cross section and you may deflect too much. So, in that to hold it then sometime we can do it tie. Okay. So, that is actually uh, uh, anchored uh, sheet pile wall and sometimes this is actually batter pile you can see suppose this type of retaining wall or something and below that there are direction of force will be different. So, to prevent tilting of this sometimes pile will be constructed like that and this type of pile when it batter it will not only take axial force it will take also some amount of other horizontal force. So, that actually a uh, batter pile also sometimes. So, that means based on function that means, it is taking this is taking only axial load this is also taking axial load this is only compacting the soil this is taking axial load, but tension this is actually uh, also uh, taking pressure uh, lateral pressure this is actually taking both lateral and vertical. So, like that different classification based on how the pile is performing for resisting the load. Then classification based on installation that is actually you can see here uh, that it is given uh, a driven pile or cast in situ pile. So, that is again that means uh, driven pile means it will be either uh, the if it is timber pile or steel pile generally as it is we can drive it inside the soil or if it is a concrete sometimes you have to precast uh, in, in the factory and that can be again driven. So, that is that is why one is cast in situ pile and another is driven pile. So, driven pile can be many types and cast in situ pile means generally concrete pile. So, you have to make a drill hole and then you have to concrete it to get the pile. So, that is in general there are two classification actually driven pile and cast in situ pile. And and see driven pile again you can see uh, uh, so, driven pile most common method many times actually uh, uh, quickly that uh, pile can be driven and steam hammer different types of hammer are used steam hammer, diesel hammer, vibratory hammer that means, uh, pile will be first uh, placed on the ground and then by putting a hammer a, a load uh, uh, so there will be head and on that head there will be load will be applied through that instant load it will be pushed inside the soil. So, that different type of hammer will be used that steam hammer, diesel hammer, vibratory hammer by which the pile will be pushed inside the soil. And uh, uh, so, again uh, driven pile can be of different types different mechanism can be used to drive the pile. So, jet driven pile and auger driven pile also. So, jet driven pile how actually first of all uh, water jet will be uh, uh, will be allowed first uh, be before pile uh, placing the pile. So, force water before pile to ease placement. So, so suppose this is the pile. Uh, so, there will be some mechanism. So, water will be forced here. So, that soil will be loosened and then uh, and then if you can push the pile easily and this will be generally uh, by 
forcing water very easily sand particles since there is no cohesion particles can be separated easily. So, sandy soil that jet driven pile will be easier and always drive with and then finally, if you entire length if you do by this loosening and then put the fire pile then pile may not get sufficient frictional strength and because of that what it is convention is always drive without jetting last 10 15 feet that means, towards end some portion has to be driven by uh, hammer because uh, there will no uh, jet, jet uh, by loosening by the uh, jet. In that way actually this will be having a very uh, 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 fixed fixity will be there by that otherwise entire pile will be like a floating. So, side soil will be loose and when you have put the pile that pile looks like floating. Whereas, if the ten, last 10 15 feet actually if you uh, put it by hammering then that it will be a firm uh, 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 base that means, it fixity will be proper and by that actually you can get a good friction as well as uh, base resistance. And auger actually used for cast in place, uh, auger method actually generally use cast in place and to drill through the obstacle. So, that means, though jet method you are using sometime if there is a problem then the some uh, uh, strong layers are uh, appear thin may be. So, sometime by augering you can cut through and go it uh, go deeper otherwise the augering is used most of the time and most frequently and most uh, common actually for cast in pile. So, cast in situ pile means actually what you have to do if the pile length is suppose 30 meter then by some means you have to make a uh, hole of 30 meter length and equal to and diameter equal more slightly more than the diameter of the pile. And then after that you have to uh, put desired reinforcement and then you have to put concrete and then solidifying based on that and after that the pile will when become solid that become pile. So, that is actually auger most use actually common use is actually for cast in situ pile. And uh, so, uh, then uh, if it is a driven pile actually see you have to uh, always record blows per feet eventually blows per inch to check the assumed profile and confirm adequate bearing is attained. That means, while driving pile suppose while uh, 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 we have selected a pile particular pile based on soil condition there and then and you have chosen a driven pile because driven pile means it will have definite, res, uh, definite resistance accordingly you have uh, suppose uh, ready with the equipment, but when you are in field and if you feel that that uh, the pile is uh, pu pushing or uh, uh, driven without any uh, effort that means the soil is not good and you have to see that what type of soil is confirmed from the level uh, uh, soil report and if you find different then you have to again uh, re examine and then you have to modify the your whatever you have recommended. So, that is the thing that means, you have to while doing this you have to do not only that I have to drive the pile and you have to be happy, what you have to do while driving you have to also certain checks are there you have to perform that means, uh, for each blow how much it is uh, pushing inside that to be counted you can see always record blows per feet that means, for every feet of pile uh, uh, driven inside how many blows are required and that to be seen and based on that if there is a number of layers are there somewhere it will be less number somewhere it will be more number from there you will get some idea about the different layers and you have to confirm that that layering whatever you have report it is reported from the soil investigation that should match by and large if it is not then you have to re examine the entire thing. And there is a guideline actually maximum driving resistance when it is a timber pile 4 to 5 blows per inch and if it is more then that actually if it is required more that means, soil is better of course, and if it is required less number of the uh, than these blows that means, soil is very very loose and that you have to check what uh, we have to do. Then, if it is a concrete actually 6 to 8 blows required for 1 inch driving and if it is a concrete uh, uh, sometime uh, uh, 12, 12 to uh, uh, 
15 blows per inch also maximum. Uh, this is both are concrete, but there may be some variation. Uh, so, uh, so that means concrete different types of concrete uh, you have the maximum blows uh, 12 to 15 per inch and if it is uh, more than that then you it is better, but it, uh, if it is too much energy is required of course, it is not good while too many uh, blows if you make then actually your pile may get uh, uh, disturbed uh, at the same time if the too less number of blows required that means soil is not good. And if it is already examined as no good, uh, then it is okay. But if you find that whatever recommended the lab soil report, if it is other than that, then you have to uh, 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 re-examine. Then uh, next thing is whatever uh, general about pile tip, uh, classification based on material, then classification based on installation method, classification based on uh, function and then uh, all those things and then you know what is the what the what function the particular pile to be performed for your project and accordingly uh, con considering the site condition, considering the availability of material, considering the uh, equipment access all those things and cost you have to select the pile. Now, when you select a particular type of pile then you have to next job is to find out the length requirement or uh, what will be the each pile should carry, how much is the capacity of each pile and what should be the length diameter that has to be designed. So, that is the uh, pile capacity estimation is the most important work perhaps for geotechnical engineers and then uh, pile capacity when you can calculate then uh, first of all you have to calculate single pile capacity and pile in single condition hardly used most of the time and uh, actually the uh, pile will be used in a group. So, uh, we cannot start with actually uh, capacity with group first of all we have to understand how to estimate the capacity for single pile and then from there how to uh, get the uh, uh, group capacity we have to learn. So, I will first take the um, uh, actually pile capacity for single pile and then I will take pile capacity for group one by one. And you can see when you do single pile again we can see the pile can be friction pile, pile can be end bearing pile, pile can be of friction and end bearing both. That means what friction pile means actually when this pile is driven and then enter through the surface of the pile. Uh, there will be frictional resistance between soil and the pile surface and that frictional resistance over the entire length whatever amount that should be equal to the load applied to the pile. So, that is if there is friction, frictional pile uh, then you have to estimate the frictional resistance whereas, the end bearing pile that means you have driven the pile up to a rock or a very steep layer and from the actually main capacity of the pile will be from the base of the pile. So, at the base resistance of the pile has to be estimated that means, end bearing actually bearing of the bearing capacity of the end has to be estimated and from there you have to find out the actual capacity and if it is a both friction and end bearing that means, soil is moderately steep it has got a moderately steep layer a base at the uh, pile uh, at the end of the pile and also it has moderately cohesion or adhesion of the soil then some frictional resistance will be there that to be estimated plus base resistance with that to be estimated these two together should be equal to the load applied. So, that is that is what. So, uh, uh, of course, with some factor of safety. So, pile can be again single pile again can be of friction pile, it can be of end bearing pile or it can be both friction and end bearing. So, when it is a friction pile you have to estimate the frictional resistance, when the end bearing pile you have to estimate the end bearing uh, bearing capacity at the base and when the friction and, and uh, end bearing both then you have to estimate the frictional resistance and base resistance that to be together uh, for that to be added to calculate the capacity of the pile. And you can see that now whatever I have already shown and uh, uh, this is actually axial load capacity that the friction pile. So, load is applied from here and, and you can see this is a generalized one first of all I have shown and you can see at the base. Uh, at the base there is a base resistance at the surface there are frictional resistance. So, 
So, friction unit skin friction multiplied by uh, the area surface area that will be equal to your frictional load or friction total frictional resistance and here actually uh, uh, allowable pressure at the base multiplied by base area will be the actual load here. So, this load will be q t and this load will be equal to q s. So, q t so q ultimate will be q s plus q t and which is q s actually can be written as f s multiplied by s that f s is the unit friction and s is the total vertical surface area and uh, and q t can be written as a f t plus uh, f t into a t f t is what actually uh, the tip resistance. So, in the tip what is the uh, uh, pressure or uh, what is the allowable pressure we can allow and multiplied by cross sectional area of the pile. So, that together will be equal q t and that two together will be q ultimate. So, q allowable will be q ultimate by factor of safety and you can see q s equal to f s uh, a s which is screen friction and so and uh, and f s actually uh, a function of soil and pile. So, different tile types of pile will have different types of friction uh, and uh, uh, of course, in combination of pile and soil both. So, uh, actually see if the uh, smooth pile with clay smooth pile with uh, sand a rough pile with clay and rough pile with sand. So, these are the different combination for which different values of frictional coefficient will be there. So, this is already I have mentioned. So, I will just go to next slide. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I think rest of the things I will uh, uh, do in the next uh, session that is actually uh, uh, how to estimate the uh, single pile capacity based on uh, frictional resistance and base resistance and how uh, uh, what is the fracture factor of safety to be used all those things uh, to be uh, discussed in the subsequent lecture. Okay, thank you.